Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be uh, discussing one more example of how the standard normal distribution is, is very helpful in working with probabilities and populations that are normally distributed. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, in this situation we say, uh, or I say, let's assume that it takes you know an individual about 25 minutes to drive to work in the morning, which is about what I do, but we say with a standard deviation of two minutes. So find the drive times that correspond to the middle 70% of this individual's data and what we want to do is assume that this is normally distributed so if or at least if my data is approximately normal, normally distributed we could assume that for the population of my data over the long term or if we could do this you know repeat the experiment for eternity it'd be perfectly normally distributed so that being said we can already get started by using our our normal distribution now You'll notice this problem is a little bit different from what people are normally, no pun intended, asked to do in a problem stats class, or actually they're asked to do this all the time, but typically the straightforward uh, approach to this is, well, you know, given our data values and that it's normally distributed, perhaps, you know, I would want to find a probability that randomly it'll take me, you know, less than a certain amount of time to get to work, you know, and, and, and that's great, you know, but you're starting with a data value and working towards an area under the curve, and what I want you to notice is, in this situation, I'm actually starting you with that 70%, <coughs> or the area under the curve, and we're going to work backwards to find the data values that would necessarily correspond to that middle 70%. So I think it's kind of important at this point to kind of bring up one fact and fact, or yeah, it is a fact, but but uh, point, and it's this. It's called the empirical rule, but recall that with the standard normal distribution, that within one standard deviation of the mean, so out to these two lines here, that uh, if it's normally distributed, or at least approximately normally, that this should be the uh, middle 68% of the data. Now, I, this is what I need to bring up for this problem, but I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of them. But, but within two standard deviations of the mean, we know that 95% of the population must lie between there and there. And between three standard deviations of the mean, I'll, I'll put this guy down here. A little contrast, you know. It's approximately 99.7% of the data. So you'll notice that you know, after these, these, this third standard deviation on either side, probabilities get pretty small, or at least significantly small with respect to the scale that we're working on. So, um, But yeah, I only mention this because what we want to do is, is kind of illustrate the fact that maybe, okay, so we know the average is 25. So we get 25, 2 minutes is our standard deviation. So 27, 29, 31 going up, 3 standard deviations to the right. And uh, 23, 21, 19 going to the left. But essentially, we already know the area we're kind of concerned with is the middle 70% of our data. Now, the reason why I brought up the empirical rule is because, um, well, notice that within one standard deviation, we have 68% of the population. So we could at least be, be fairly certain that, well, we need to know that we would be outside one standard deviation. So the middle 70% of data, I'm going to kind of try to highlight here, but I would say has to lie between here and here. So already, uh, any student maybe that's watching this, just know that you know this is the area that we already know. We know that this here is together, all together, 0.7000, or 70%, which is way awesome. But we know it falls outside one standard deviation, and it kind of gives us an idea, looking at our, our distribution here, you know, what might these scores be? So if I was just spitballing, you know, you know like a 22 point something and a, and uh, 27 point something, you know, I don't, I don't know, but we're going to find this out. These are, these are just simply guesses. Uh, but it gives you a good idea. Now, here's the thing. Uh, we actually have a table that we can go look up these values on, <clears throat> in which this time we're going to look at all these areas and uh, necessarily work backwards to a z-score. Now, the interesting thing about this problem is, yeah, this table does a really good job of giving us z-scores. We have positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. The mean would be 0. We have negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. But these uh, numbers of standard deviations to the left or the right. So I think we're going to get a score here that would indicate that we have 1 point something something on our z-score. But what we want are the drive times. So what we're going to be taking is we're going to take our z-scores and we're going to convert them back into original data values or x values using this formula. Or, if we want to modify it here, I mean, if you can follow me here, if we multiplied both sides of this equation by sigma, or the standard deviation, and then added this mu here, we would have this. We'd say x equals uh, z times our standard deviation sigma, and the, you add on the, the average of the mean. Uh, but essentially, this is going to convert our scores that were z scores 
with this parameter information, what standard deviation mean, back into x values. Cool, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. If this entire area is 70%, I just want to mention that, of course, from the mean out to one of those individual z scores, oh, we don't want to do that. Maybe we'll go green here. Uh, but from here to here, that would be half of that total area, so 0.35%. And I don't know if you can read this, I'll write it again out here, but 0 0.3500. Now our intent is to go look at our table and find something that had an area as close as possible to 35%, because if we could find that, what that's going to tell us is how many standard deviations it lies from the mean, and thus we would have a z-score. And notice this, if you have your positive z, uh, you've, you've necessarily found your negative z because this curve is symmetrical. They both have areas of 0 0.3500. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, 0.3500. The interesting thing is this table here actually goes from the entire left side of the distribution out to some number of standard deviations on the right. So I'm kind of subtracting a half every time, uh, but forgive me. But 0 0.3500, we really want 0 0.8500, as close as we can get to it. And what do you know? My pen's kind of right on it, but 0 0.8500 you're not going to get perfectly there. I mean, the best we can do is 0 0.8508, and so that would be uh, 1.04 standard deviations, and I suppose the first thing I'd point out is this, 1.04 to the right. Uh, is necessarily that, uh, that's entirely reasonable, okay? So that being said, let's just uh, walk it over here. We say, okay, so now x, let's go ahead and formulate this here, but uh, x equals z, so which we calculated as 1.04, 104% of, I'm going to mention that here in a second, but our standard deviation is 2 plus 1, oh, the mean. Of course, we know the mean is 25. So 1.04 times 2, that would be 2.08 plus our 25. But uh, indeed, all we're saying is this. We were, we were 1.4, or excuse me, 1.04 of these. Uh, standard deviations, each one was individually two, so 1.04 of these twos above average. Okay, so we get uh, 27, 27.08. Now that was on our high end. Now what if we used our negative z-score? That's right, we, we actually, I want to show you this, but actually if you use your negative z-score, you get x equals uh, negative 1.04, and you might see what's going on here. We have negative 1.04 of these two things, plus the average of 25, but in this case, we just simply get negative 2.08 plus our 25, and this would end up as, let's see here, uh, 23, 23 minus 8 cents would be 22, uh, 92. Um, but essentially, and we should label this in minutes, these would be my drive times that would correspond to the middle 70%. So 70% um, of the time, one could safely assume that it's going to take me anywhere between about about 20, 23, okay, uh, and about 27 minutes. And if you go back over here and look at my guesses, you know, I had 22 point something, not 23, but I mean, hey, it was really close, and uh, and I was just rounding this up in my head anyway. So that is below 23. I'm not saying I got 23 for a second, but uh, yeah, but hopefully this helps people out. Enjoy.